Good morning, family. Tuesday morning, and uh, I want to go ahead and give you your nugget for today. We've been talking about Matthew chapter uh, 6, verses uh, 5 through 14, and, and uh, right now we're on the part of that text where Jesus is, is emphasizing um, some of the aspects of prayer um, that deal with verse number 10 in particular. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Um, go back and look at that translation that we looked at on yesterday where we get kind of a literal appreciation of what it means, um, where he's suggesting that the reign of God come and the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. As this relates to prayer, we've already discussed on yesterday that uh, we ought to be praying in a way that actualizes that statement. We ought to be praying in a way that, that desires for the rule of God, kingdom, the sovereign dominion and authority of God, all in that word kingdom, to come, to be expected, to, to be a part of our life on a regular basis. And yesterday I challenge you that you pray in such a way where you're conscious, uh, that you are conscious, you're praying for the coming rule of God in your conscience, that you understand uh, what the words mean, you understand the, the, the idea of welcoming the rule of God in your life and that you want it for yourself. Um, and as much as we want God to rule everything, you and I need to want the rule of God for ourselves. But in the text itself, I want to give you a second aspect of the prayer challenge. In the text itself, Jesus is praying um, or teaching us about the model of prayer. And so I want to challenge you today to pray for the coming rule of God through Christ Jesus. When he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, remember, he's teaching it. But as he's teaching it, um, the entire notion of the kingdom of God coming was centered around Jesus. The expectation in the text was really of the teacher uh, coming into the world, going to the cross, dying on our behalf, being buried, resurrected, ascending to the right hand of God. And that's the that's the, the, the primary emphasis of the text when it describes the rule of God. How would that rule come? That rule would come through the fulfillment of everything the scripture was talking about. From Genesis to Revelation, everything was centered on Christ. And you go back and take a look at Genesis chapter 3, where God describes the, the rule of Christ by triumphing over, uh, triumphing over Satan. And every part of scripture from that point to now was all centered around the coming of Messiah. The expectation was not only that the teacher was teaching about himself, something that was discussed in the past, that he presently was involved in, that he futuristically would fulfill, but even right now, we experience the rule of Christ as the anointed one, as the one who has ascended, as the one right now who has all authority in heaven and in earth. So as we pray now, we still pray with an expectation of God's rule to come, but we pray now that that rule to come, rule would come in the life of those who have not bowed the knee uh, to, the, to, the, to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, which helps you to see secondly, not only is it a prayer of expectation, but it's an evangelistic. It has an evangelistic component. Our evangelism then is centered around this resurrected Lord. We, we not only are recipients of what Christ has done, but we should want others to have the same benefit and the same joy that we have in Christ Jesus. We should want others to enjoy what it means to have your sins forgiven as a result of the work of King Jesus on the cross. We should want others to have communion with the Holy Spirit as a result of the work of King Jesus. We should want others to be able to be in covenant with God, a covenant that can't be taken away because of the work of King Jesus. His kingdom, his rule, his authority, his dominion has come and that dominion has assured me and assured you that we have a relationship with the Lord. So not only are we praying, um, understanding the expectation of the coming of Christ, and we're praying because of the evangelistic component. We ought to also be thinking about God leading us to people that we can communicate the same thing to. So thirdly, it's an encounter. We are, we are praying in a way that not only do we regularly encounter God through recognizing his rule. 
And not only are we encountering God through rejoicing over the victory that we have, but we are also encountering God by remembering the privileges that we have as a result of this covenant relationship. And we want to reach out to others, as many as God will lead our way to be able to help them to have what we have. Let me give you your challenge. Your challenge really is centered around this last point. I've said to you so far that in this prayer uh, of the coming rule of God through Christ, that there's a sense of expectation in the text, that it is an evangelistic component. But in this sense, it was God's getting God preparing to evangelize the entire world, to give the good news of the message that his rule has come and that rule has come through King Jesus. But then thirdly, the encountering component is your challenge. When we pray today, let's pray. Let's pray uh, that we are celebrating what it means to be on this side of history where we encounter God every single moment. We encounter the rule of Christ every single moment. And I want you to pray that you recognize his rule in your life. Recognize it in its full, um, full spectrum. Recognize the fact that that everything about you is centered in on Christ, but then rejoice over the victory. I mean, really spend some time rejoicing. Rejoice over what God has delivered you from. Rejoice over the fact that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has freed you from your sins. Rejoice over what it means to have the Lord looking over you and you having the Spirit of God tabernacling in your life. And then not only rejoice in it, but remember the privileges that you have now as one who's adopted into the family of God. Remember those privileges that came at the at the price of the blood of Messiah and then do everything in your power to reach out to others. Reach out to those who don't know him like you know him. Reach out to those who are still wrestling with their sin issues. Reach out to those who need Messiah in their life. When you pray, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. God, we want it here now. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're praying with a conscience that's set on understanding the rule of God, but we're also praying for the coming rule of God through the centerpiece of it all, King Jesus. I'm going to pray for you today. And I want you to pray for me and let's watch God change the entire world through the coming rule of King Jesus. God bless you. Pray it up now.